What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another StarCraft Brood War Remastered cast with Scan versus Zealot. We're gonna have a couple of quick games here, I imagine, between these two. Zealot being one of the most aggressive Zerg players that we have, uh, who made it into the ASL uh, last season. Didn't quite manage to make it in this season, but I'm sure he's going to continue taking shots uh, at those qualifiers and he is a very fun kind of player to watch somebody that uh, you don't really want to emulate but some of his builds are pretty cool and if you can throw a few of his builds into your play style you've got a pretty good handle on eco build eco builds and uh, just standard macro plays and you can throw a couple of his builds in there you could become a very scary player so we're going to continue to watch zealot and how he develops and if he's able to uh, develop a really good strong uh, eco style ability to macro and uh, play in the late game and then he's uh, continues to have these really interesting and uh, aggressive plays as well he could become a very formidable player. Now, he's going to be opening up with a 12 hatchery. Getting into his pool and gas. Where is Scan going to be building a uh, barracks on high ground? Now, the high ground barracks is not as common as it used to be. It hasn't been uh, very popular as of late. It allows you to get your supply depot... A little bit closer to your mineral line which means that your scv can make it back to the mineral line uh quite a bit faster oh he's gonna catch this overlord uh i don't think this will die but it's gonna be close yeah taking quite a bit of damage on that second marine is coming where exactly does the vision end okay there it is vision does end and what was i saying oh yeah i was talking about Ooh, taking some more damage. Talking about the uh, barracks on low, or on high ground. If it's on low ground, then you can set up a wall. It's a little bit easier to defend, but it's a little more economical if you put it on the high ground. And it also gives you a chance against something like four pool. Um, because if you end up going for a wall in uh, to open as Terran and there's a four pool coming you just die it's a hundred percent death uh, I don't think there's any contesting that I, I'm pretty sure you just always die so a little bit afraid of that p possibility maybe scan gonna send his first few Marines across the map I don't know what this is for I can't imagine possibly what this what the reason for this would be because he saw that there was a sunken colony finishing up Maybe he just wants to catch a Ling or two coming out. I don't know. Um, this Sunken Colony is something that uh, is very common for Zealot to do. He loves throwing down that uh, frontal Sunken Colony and then just not even worrying about building extra Lings. Just don't even think about it. No need to build Lings. The Marines are going to deal no damage. We're just going to get into uh, our eco and whatever play that zealot had in mind for this game which could be any number of different things it could be that he wants to do a guardian play Ooh, there's the hatchery over at center left interesting decision there taking the third base of scan you know that zealot is not planning to go for an eco play i imagine it's going to be for Guardians. That's my prediction. But I could be wrong. He could also go into a very quick hive and try to rally defilers uh, with Lurker. He could uh, try to just all in Muta as well. But with the armor coming, I think it's a pretty good bet that we're going to see Guardians this game. And that should be a lot of fun. A four racks with plus one 
very standard stuff from Scan, but it won't allow him to force out any extra sunken colonies. He's just going to have to get the turrets down and hope that he can deflect these mutas uh, without taking too much damage. Unfortunately for him, his uh, turrets are a little bit late and he may end up losing an SCV. He does lose the SCV, but it's okay. Good number of Marines here. They do not have range though. You could pick off more of this. I talk about this a lot, this timing right uh, as the Mutalists arrive. Uh, going up against a four racks player, they do not have that range. It's a point in the game where we rarely see Zerg players really abuse the Terran, but that's because the Mutalist number is still not that high. It's a little bit scary to dive in right now. Trying to bounce some glaives off of this supply depot. We just hit the mid midway point for the flyer carapace. So of course, I have to throw down that queen's nest. Uh, if you do that, throw down the queen's nest right as this is halfway done. You can start your hive and then the hive will be finished right as carapace finishes. And that'll lead you into a very nice timing for your uh, guardian transition. We'll pull out some of these mutas that are damaged and continue to harass this marine medic group. Plus one and range are now done though, so it's not as easy. Ends up losing one of those mutas. Just gonna continue to make as the uh, hive comes up. There's the scan. He sees the hive. He has factory on the way need to get this tech rolling for scan you don't want to be just sitting here on only marines when the guardian transition comes but you don't want to stop making marines either and keep that marine production rolling so that you have uh, enough bio out on the field that your opponent can't just morph their guardians right in front of your natural if they're able to kill this little bio force and then morph the guardians like right here it's it just becomes so scary what you'd like to do is keep track of the mutas and where they're at and then right as the morph starts push out and you know kill the cocoons or at least like get on the other side of the cocoons maybe go ahead and counter attack or something like that we have scans going down everywhere, but he's checked He's checked basically every location except for this, and he still can't see, oh, he just barely can see the creep. I don't think he actually saw that. Yeah, that was really, really close though. Hydras are on the way. Hydra speed is coming up as well. That greater spire is just about done. Marines moving out on the map. Dude, if he just if he just walked a little bit closer, he would have seen this base and he could have forced an engagement. Would have been amazing. Ship weapon starts. He's gonna go for Valkyries in order to defend this push. Two on the way right now, but guardians are about to be morphed. Let's see all of these mutas. A lot of them are damaged. Most of them are gonna get made into there it is. The scan comes down. He sees it. He sees it. He knows where that third base is. Gonna dive in on top of the reinforcements. Zealot losing some of these mutas, but doing a pretty decent tra trade. Killing off a lot of marines. As his guardians should be morphing. Wait, where are they? It's not gonna morph guardians? Well, I'm a bit confused. There we go. He starts the guardian pr uh, production now. The two Valkyries arrive though, and that's what the Hydras are here for. They need to be stopping these Valkyries. Gotta be targeting onto the Valkyries. Oh, losing all the Hydras before the Guardians pop out. This is quite bad. Now the Marines can move forward and potentially get underneath these cocoons. The cocoons. Yeah, they're just in range. Some of these Guardians are gonna finish up, but a lot of the Mutas uh, will be forced to cancel. And so the Guardians on this high ground doing some work, but the one Valkyrie is going to be able to potentially shut this play down. A few Hydra's going to pop out. They need to be sent to deal with that Valkyrie. 
Marines are pushing out. Gonna just run away from these Guardians. Now with three Valkyries, the Guardian play is looking less and less formidable. Yeah, generally how these games go is if you don't kill right away with the first Guardian morph, you're unlikely to be able to do anything as time goes on, but he is going to go ahead and grab Lurker Aspect. We'll see if he's able to ever morph Lurkers in this game because uh, things are starting to come to a head. Good target there on one of those Valkyries. Scan faltering a little bit with his Marine and Valkyrie control. Has a very good number though. Four Valkyries is super scary and we're about to have plus one attack of course there's two one or two plus one so three total armor which means that with no upgrades only three damage per rocket is going to get through onto these guardians which takes a long time to kill I'm trying to loop around to the back see if you can get some kills on these guardians with the valkyries oh this is a pretty good volley Plus one just finished up, so now they're doing four damage per rocket, nullifying that plus one armor upgrade uh, that Zealot got earlier. Making some lurkers now. He's just kind of sitting out in the front. Is this play going to work? That's a lot of Hydras. Quite a few Guardians as well, but they're getting softened up a lot. Oh boy, these Guardians have taken way too much damage. And yeah, look at that. Guardians just evaporate. Plus, the Lurkers will not be able to finish. Scan coming out and just dismantling this attack. Very well done by him. It took him so long to figure out that this is what was going on. That there was a base over at the center left. But as soon as he did, he made the right moves. He didn't get too aggressive. He didn't lose all of his army. He kept pulling back whenever necessary. Now he's flying around with an insane number of Valkyries. Just executing masses of overlords. Lurkers are being made on this high ground. But there's hardly any hope left for Zealot in this game. He's going to run up towards the natural. God, a lot of these Lurkers just kind of bouncing off of each other. There isn't uh, any vessels out just yet. So there is some potential for this attack. That is a lot of lurkers. There's the two vessels, the first two vessels popping out. They do not have a radiate, nor do they have that energy just yet. Getting a pretty decent engage on these lurkers. Oh God, the unburrow right as the Marines are coming in from all sides. He's gonna get a great surround. Excellent control by scan, cleans up this army. And that has got to be GG. Really nothing left for Zelda. He's making one lurker out in front of his opponent's base and he really can't create much less or much more gg is called by zealot excellent hold kind of a crazy second phase to the all-in going with the guardians and then realizing it wasn't going to work switching into lurker if scan had messed this up at all if he hadn't pushed out right as the guardians were finishing up and gotten underneath them and you know forced a bunch of them to cancel he may have just died if he hadn't pushed out and killed all of the guardians before the lurkers finished he might have just died a lot of things could have gone wrong there for scan but he walked that type tight rope pretty well perfect and he gets himself a win in game number one guys let's jump into game number two see if zealot has any other wacky plans for this series is he going to go for another Guardian push? Does he have something else cooked up? Let's jump right in. And speaking of cooking, these games are hot and fresh out the oven. They were played on the 24th of October, 2024. Today is the 27th of October. And last night I went out with my wife to party in Osaka. It's the weekend of Halloween. And so we both dressed up. Uh, I tried to order a costume online twice. The first time it didn't show up, I ordered a different one. The second time it didn't show up, it was already too late to order again. So I ended up going to just a department store 
and picking out just a random costume and it was still fun we had a good time and I'm wondering what your guys' plans are for Halloween. Are you getting too old for it? Are you taking your kids out? I know a lot of you guys are uh, my age or older. I'm 33, by the way. I still like to go out sometimes. Um, haven't been out uh, partying for quite a long time. And I just thought that Halloween going to Osaka would be an excellent opportunity. So... We worked it out, but uh, <laughs> it's, I'm not like it's not like it used to be, boys. It's not like it used to be. By the end of the night, oh my goodness, was I sore, tired, and just ready for bed. I think it was maybe uh, 1 a.m. and I had to go back home. Ooh, this is some sneaky stuff. Here we go. I like to see it. We had the 11 spawning pool, 12 gas. Or was this an even earlier gas? Um, yeah, this is even earlier than that, isn't it? Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back for a second. All right, we're back. There it is, the eleven pool. Is he gonna wait for twelve to grab the gas, or is he gonna go on eleven? This is just for science, guys. For my own scientific curiosity, what is Zealot going to do? This is the 12 gas. So this is exactly the same build as what Soma uh, does when he goes for two hatch muta. So I, I think that's the play we're going to see. There might be something else crazy coming, but I believe we're just going to have three drones on minerals three drones on gas at the natural and completely all in i've been doing this on stream a bunch if you guys want to come check it out uh, i'll be doing some more streaming uh this week as well i think uh, maybe not too much because i do have some friends coming out to visit uh, and i still need to do uploads of course every single day um so gaming kind of takes a back seat to Entertaining you guys on the channel. It is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and start that layer. 100 or 2 minute 35, 2 minute 36 was the timing that I saw from Soma. I've actually got it written down right next to me on a notepad. It was 11 pool, 12 guess, 12 hatch, 4 links, 2 minute 36 layer, speed. Let's see if he gets that. As soon as he gets the spire, second gas. Three drones at the natu natural minerals. And we will have a five minute spire. If everything goes to plan. Oh, Ling's running in. Oh, oh boy. Something went pretty bad here for scan. I guess, you know, not having the wall in and skimping a little bit on the Marines. Oh no, another Marine goes down. Uh oh. He okay. He's still got the SUV at least building the uh, command center, so that's something. I don't think we lost any SUVs, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll definitely picture and picture those links. By the way, uh, just a vocal reminder to myself. You guys have already seen it, but there's the spire. We're gonna have the gas now. It's kind of late, just a little, just a tad bit late. He's gonna go up to 18. And then make an overlord. Or maybe he made this a little bit earlier. I like to go... Go up to 18. Make an overlord. Uh, make the spire. Make another drone. Make the extractor. Make another drone. And then the overlord pops. And you've already... Or you just add on like two more drones, I think. I think that's correct. And then you have exactly the, the correct number to have... Uh, three drones of the natural. There we go. Okay, here's a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a divergence from what I would, uh, what I've seen from Soma. Instead, he's going to throw down a creep colony at the front. And with the creep colony at the front, a fourth drone has been added. So he may be a little bit light on larva. You can see he's only got four larva available. So he can only make four 
mute us right off the bat and um if you do this build perfectly at five minutes your spire finishes and you have six mutas in production immediately so we're just a tad bit off due to the fact that he had to throw down this extra sunken uh, but he won't take any damage from naked marines that's for sure and there was a little bit of a move out there from scan scan gonna be setting up his turrets in a timely manner we should have at six minutes five mutas flying in so far there are four there's five and six and here we come up to six minutes now pretty fast timing but you've sacrificed some things to get to this point as zealot you don't really have the drone count and you're a little bit light on larva because the uh delayed because of the delayed hatchery uh, at the natural coming in gonna get a scv potentially does not get that scv surprised he was targeting the building turret rather than the scv goes after the turret again starting to bounce glaives off of these barracks quite a lot killing off some marines with that now putting together a full 11 mutas is he gonna go for the natural where is he headed oh had a little bit of a pause there flying in to start to pick off these turrets at the natural nothing in the bunker unfortunately there for scan so he's going to be able to clear this area out pretty efficiently getting down one more turret good repair there very good repair a little bit of miss micro from zealot he does commit fully to taking out this area and will get rid of every single turret has more mutas flying up gonna turn those into another pack and get back to work dealing damage in this natural scan has pulled all the SCVs out but this doesn't mean that scan is necessarily far behind he's 33 workers to just 19 drones so has a fair few more workers but that's slowly being changed by zealot zealot is cutting down those numbers and he's preventing the factory from finishing as well as long as he can prevent this factory he's gonna prevent the uh, Eventual tech switch, which should be able to route these mutas. Oh, diving in. Losing a couple of mutas there. Factory has to finish. He's got to get this thing down. Only one Marine in that bunker. A lot more mutalists have arrived. He's got a good stack going. And maybe even able to kill this bunker. There's not enough SCVs to repair uh, in the vicinity. So he can just force that down with only one marine it's really not going to be easy to defend and gg is called there it is zealot takes down scan with just a quick mutilus play even though scan had the turrets in time he had a good scv advantage he didn't load up his bunker and zealot was able to break through those turrets open up a position, get into the back lines, and force Scan to tap out. This is exactly the way that I, I want to be able to play this build. This is the power of this two hatch muta build. The one big hole in this game though, that I wanna emphasize uh, for you for you guys out there who are like, oh, this is, this is a perfect build. There's there's almost nothing that the Terran can do against this. Well, there's one massive thing that the Terran can do, which is build an eBay in your natural <laughs> and just block your hatchery. It's so annoying. It's so, so annoying. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's something that I realized as soon as I started doing this build on ladder. If they scout you first with their SCV and you've already gone for, you know, pool and gas, <laughs> they just build an, an Evo or a... They just build an engineering bay in your natural. You are boned. <laughs> like, there's almost nothing you can do. Um, yeah, so... Scan didn't get out on the map early. He didn't get the scout off. Uh, Zelt was able to uh, get in here in time. Maybe building the factory over by these turrets. 
you know, just throwing down more turrets as well. I, he was throwing down quite a few. Scan had, you know, four turrets in the natural and still wasn't able to hold on. But if you just keep throwing down turrets when your opponent is doing this play, and one thing you need to note as well, a good way to defend this or a good way to play against this is you just keep building turrets like the the scv that built these two turrets he just builds another one and this scv that built these two just build another one and these this one over here is built you know four turrets just build another one and you just keep one scv in each position building turrets and it just keeps going up and while you're doing that oh did he not have scans at all wait what how come there's no scanner there am i missing something there was definitely scanners in this game right you just keep scanning the natural. You scan the natural over and over and over again while building turrets and transitioning into Valkyrie. And you really don't need to do anything more than that. You just keep your bio uh, moving between the bases. If you know he's killing turrets here, you bring the bio down there. If he's killing turrets here, you bring the bio over there. Just back the turrets up and keep on building turrets and you know, Scan, he just kind of lapsed on that a little bit. He didn't have the bunker full. And Zealot takes this one home. So a quick one-to-one -one series, guys. I'm going to be looking forward to more Zealot games. Actually, I have one in the pocket. Why don't I just cast that right now before we go? Okay, one more for the boys. We got Ruin spawning in bottom right versus Zealot over here in the top left. And, of course, Minstrel going to be at the map what is zealot doing these days in zvp i'm assuming it's going to be some sort of hydra bust i know he is very partial to drop play as well and it can be an awesome method for beating up on protoss players especially on a map like this where there's lots of lanes coming down this direction you can you come down this lane, set up a drop, and just fly straight into the main. Uh, and it's not easy to scout that. This is not an area that you're usually having armies, you know, sitting and waiting. You can come through this path. And yeah, you can, you can catch some people off guard, that's for sure. It's not a great map, I think, for a just straight up. Uh, layer zerg play which i know that zealot is partial to because as a, a player who's just building you know hydras and lurkers uh mixing a few lings in there as well but not going into hive it's tough to get a good surround on this map all the different lanes are very tight everywhere you go there's there's kind of tight chokes you know, there's bridges, there's little chokes, there's, you know, high ground ramps. None of these are great for having a giant army trying to surround a smaller Protoss army. You're, you're most likely going to end up getting pushed into a tight choke and stormed to absolute death. And so, we'll see how Zealot decides to play this one. He's already got a gas, but he's building quite a lot of lings he's not mining that gas either he does not have speed or anything on the way just building the gas and not mining it seems quite counterintuitive but we'll see what he's got for us trying to chase down this probe really doesn't want to loop back around and see that there are more lings coming because that would be bad he's pulled together quite a lot of lings there's the probe coming out Try to dive on this cannon. Can he actually get it? Yes, he does get the cannon. Gonna start to target down some probes. Three probes have fallen. Four, five, six, and seven. Ooh, okay, dancing around. Looks like he might save that, but can run up into the main with these lings and create some more havoc. Looks like... Uh, could have just send the zealot to chase that's kind of risky if zealot was making more lings and just sending them across this cannon would die and he would lose like if he he had been mining gas and and picked up ling speed 
we would this game would be over but i guess you got to do something rain or not rain ruin is going to try not to lose anything in the main by chasing the lings with the zealot and send one zealot out across the map oh boy this overlord was left over the natural and it might die barely not i think oh he loses it wow that was really close but he does lose the overlord which is incredibly painful i think you send the zealot man send the zealot what are we doing send that zealot across the map we just killed an overlord he can't actually build anything he's gonna be building some hydras though there was a moment where he couldn't build anything was supply blocked wait for the stargate to finish up and a corsair to go across the map to check on things but that might be too late hydras are already in production some of them are out and yeah there's gonna be a big wave of hydras coming to the front he's making drones okay zealot is probably not gonna get this kill then i thought he was going to only make hydras come across and end this game but Seems like he's just going to go for the wall. Drones coming out. He's still controlling this Ling. I don't know why. Just let that Ling die. And we've got more important things to worry about. Like keeping our overlords alive and getting our drones to mine. I just are going to make their way up to the front of this wall. Five more in production. Hatcheries are coming up. This overlord could go down. We're a little bit lax on defending that. We don't have a DT yet. And in fact, we do not have the tech for that either. Oh gosh, that's so low. Five HP on this uh, overlord. And he's just going to come out and kill that off. Pretty annoying stuff. And easily target down the gateway and the forge. No problem for Zealot picking that off. No Hydras over at the third. With two Corsairs, he may be able to get some kills. Range is not done yet, so he can't kill the forge at the, the natural. But oh boy, Zealot is losing more than he should. This is kind of a limitation uh, of zealot and his play style is he's he's not quite as solid as the other zerg players he's not able to uh, spin all the plates uh, quite as effectively as you know a hero or a soul key or anyone like that he's got some of these fun aggressive plays but he's just not quite at that level when it comes to playing defensive and uh, holding back Corsairs and Zealots running out on the map and dealing with these types of plays. He's building overlords in his main when he should really be building them all at his natural, building everything else out of his main uh, so that he can keep his overlords together. Some of his drones not mining. They're going to get to work now. Up to 38 workers. Pretty reasonable at this point, but he's only on five hatches. Excuse me. He was on four hatches. There's hatch number five. And hatch number six should come down soon. But he starts lurker aspect. Let's see if he can get some lurkers in the front. He's going to lose some of these hydras. A lot of zealots being pumped out now. Four gate zealot. Going to be pushing back. Ironically, zealot from his natural. And... Now there's no chance of a lurker contain. So I'm not sure exactly what the plan is for Zealot. I think we're going to have him go just make some lurkers and defend and then go into drop. I believe that's the best play, but I'm not quite sure. Bringing the hydras together. Some of them are going to get stuck down here, unfortunately. Making some lurker eggs at the front. He can go up the ramp, but that will give up the overlords that are down here and these zealots can be uh, made to work on this uh, drone line as well he may want to cancel these so that he can come down the ramp and help deal with the zealots down at the bottom ah, he's just gonna let those finish 
And so a lot of Hydras will die. Zealots try to come over to the third base, but they're going to get denied. Lurkers being done and already getting some kills means that we're just going to have to back away as ruin. However, this game has been opened up quite a bit. There's the burrow. Some damage has been done, dealt back to Zealot. And so this is not a one-sided game any longer. It felt pretty one-sided the way it was going in the early game. The number of kills from those early lings was devastating. But it hasn't been a killing blow. It hasn't been a nail in the coffin. It's really just been a little bit of damage that was easily weathered by Ruin, who now has 52 probes. He's got Templar in the natural. He's got all the defenses ready to go. Will he be able to survive the next phase of the game, which is when Zealot starts to throw drops in everywhere and make things really feisty and awkward and weird for Ruin to deal with? Right now, we don't have an Overlord at the natural, which would be extremely extremely bad were there a DT uh, for Ruin to work with. If he just builds a DT, he can come out and start killing lurkers. Uh, he does need to get an observer out though first. And he's currently focusing on just building as many dragoons as possible. Maybe <laughs> gonna have to kill that cybernetic core. It's pretty annoying that building right there. You rarely ever see the cybernetic core placed in a position like that. Uh, and it's very much messing with the AI of these Dragoons, so something he may have to deal with later, but for now he's going to start to try and push forward. Zealot has amassed 47 drones behind this, but he doesn't have, it seems, the full army necessary. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Drop over here. Double drop. Double drop into the main as well. This is going to get crazy, guys. Dropping out these lurkers, dropping out these hydras, getting the burrow there. Nice storms on that. That's going to get completely shut down. Lurker in the main base. Probably going to get shut down as well. Only one kill on that. Okay, got a, one more little volley into the mineral line. But I think Rune handled that completely perfect. And he should be able to push out from this spot. We're supply blocked as Zealot. He needs to be rallying forward hydras to keep this containment but it's unlikely he'll be able to he can't even build a hydra right now he runs forward and snipes three templar though those three templar kills are big however pure zealot dragoon with this much he's gotta kill that oh my god please just kill that cybernetic core my god ruin get your army out it's crazy to me that he's just gonna let that live Oh, look at all the dragoons running around in this natural. Should have been able to smash that. Absolutely smash that containment. But because of this weird placement, he loses a little bit more than he should. However, now that the army is kind of getting out on the map, there's an opportunity for a rune counterattack. I just moving around the top side. He wants to counter this third. Back at home doesn't really have much. If Rune went straight across the map, he might be able to just bust in the natural and kill him. But instead, he's going to fall back. He's going to make sure that he's safe. Make sure that these counter attacks can't hurt him. Can't shut down his third base while he makes those cannons. That's going to leave a big opportunity though for Zealot to do this huge drop into the main. That's a lot of overlords going in right now. And quite a bit of this force from Rune is actually tied up in the center right. So we'll see how much damage this can get done as the Zealot Dragoon army makes its way back in. The Hydras and the Lurkers are going to be dealing a lot of damage. We got these Zealots at 1-1, one, one, whereas... Uh, plus two is now done for these Hydralis coming into the high ground. He's trying to make his way up this ramp, but getting completely shut down. Once again, going to set up a containment at the front. Zealot looking for some way to capitalize. 
on the movements that Ruin is having to make. Uh, Ruin's having to ping pong back and forth between the two bases. He's hoping that somewhere he, you know, messed up, that he, he wasn't keeping his army all together. And then he can break one of these locations. It seems like the third base may be about to break. Or having a flanking army come up this ramp. Oh god, that Templar does get one shot off. One storm. And the third base will survive. That's a huge save. Keeping the third base alive right now. If he can get, you know, five cannons up and online at this base with one Templar or two Templar. He's going to be able to hold that indefinitely. And it'll be up to Zealot to continue to expand and grow. He's staying on this tech. Just pure layer, man. And he's going to be going for a drop once again. This time, completely ready for a play like this. Ruin is just going to throw down storms on all of this. And look at how beautifully he stacked up those lurkers for Ruin. Ruin... Able to get the absolute premium storms on those lurkers. However, he wasn't able to kill them. Or at least not all of them. And quite a few of them are getting a lot of damage. This lurker specifically. With six probe kills already. Small army. Standing up on high ground. We'll keep the third alive for now. 50 workers to 55 drones. The tempo is starting to go in Zealot's favor, slowly but surely. However, the army is not increasing in complexity at all. We're just remaining on plus two needle spines and continuing to try to drop in over and over again while trying to contest this third base, pulling Ruin apart bit by bit. Another attack. Moving up towards this high ground, he's driven a wedge in between the natural and the third. Bringing a lurker up towards this. Oh my god. Can he get some big shots? Ooh! Holy crap. 18 kills on that. Just got 10 probe kills with that last uh, spine shot. Absolutely insane. That was so much damage. And that might have actually swung this entire game. I thought that Rune was going to eventually uh, completely stabilize. I think we've got a battle rally or something. I just keep walking in there. I thought he was going to stabilize and then make this fourth base. But the drop's going to come in again. And Rune is outside of his natural. He's sending units back to deal with this small drop. But that's exactly what Zealot wants. He's just going to keep doing this over and over and over again. There's not a whole lot that Rune can do. Wow, I guess the uh, Templar Archives was killed during one of those earlier drops. And so, you know, without the Templar Archives, he's not going to be able to do too much. He won't be able to make too many different units. Drop coming in with the Double Lurker. Going to go ahead and get, try to kill this Mineral Line. Oh my god, so many kills. These Lurkers just annihilating everything in 27 probes remain beautifully done by zealot he makes this play look so good but it's it's very hard to pull off uh, what he's doing right now he's just pulling protoss apart every time he steps out of position he's forcing the engages that he wants he's pushing his opponent out of position and he's taking advantage over every move that rune makes and Rune with only 23 probes can't even field a large enough army to fight any longer. He certainly doesn't have enough to, to hold both locations. His main base and his third. And definitely not his fourth as well. Uh, but mass cannon is going to be very effective. If he just keeps building cannons and you know probes off of four nexus. He might stabilize. It's possible. Yeah, mass cannon is usually not that good because you would have a hive, but we don't have a hive. There's not even a twinkle of a hive in Zealot's eye right now. It's just pure Hydra lurker until the end of time, it seems. More lurkers being made on the top side. 
Hydra Lurker. Going to be punching through down at the bottom once again. Hitting this main. Ruin might just tap out when he sees the drop coming into his main. This has been such a punishing game for him. He's had such a hard time holding on this entire time. And, and now he's going to be dealing with yet another drop into his main. He could end up losing even more of his infrastructure. The base doesn't really matter anymore. The Nexus doesn't really matter. The probes are so few. It's not going to make that much of a difference. But the gateways cannot be replaced. They are irreplaceable. Whoa, these alt or these uh, lurkers just running in. A lot of them are going to die. And I think with just the following, the follow-up uh, Templar and Dragoons coming, I think he can handle this. I think he can kill this. Is he going to be able to survive after that though? It's looking a little bit tough. Losing Dragoons. He's got some more workers going. 27 workers remain in this game. Hardly any income though. And nothing being made. Or almost nothing being made back at home. He's got a couple of Archons. A couple of Dragoons. He has some army moving back and forth. He's sending some probes over towards his third. He has the fourth locked down pretty well. But doesn't have a lot of cannons over at that third right uh, at this moment more archons being made he's gonna send his entire uh basically what's left of ruin's army is gonna go up into this main base try to save the gateways that's what he desperately needs to do at this point he's going to be dealing with yet another drop into the main diving all over top of these gateways i think this is it guys there's no real storm presence in this main base and just two Dragoons and a couple of Archons is never going to clear this. All of the gateways are going to go down. Nothing he can do about that. He sends a Templar down. That was a Templar with so many storms in it. I think it came from top right, in fact, to try and help clean out the main. It was a desperate last attempt. Everything gets canceled there at the end. You can see he had some money going into these gateways to try and produce something. But Zealot was all over him. The drops were endless in this main base. And there was no idea of ever changing up the style. He was just going to do this until the end of time. Eons in the future. It was still going to be Zealot sitting there making plus two Hydras. Until the, you know, teched out Protoss forces eventually overcame that. And just storm everything to death. It's funny, you know, I can go ahead and talk, talk about how difficult it is to play layer style on this map. Uh, but then we can just, you know, have Zealot come in and show me that it's absolutely possible. And that actually it's pretty decent. Like we're, we're doing a lot of damage here. We're having a hard time as Ruin setting up outlying bases while still covering this main and i guess that's because the rune didn't opt to take this base it wasn't really covering his main at all and he didn't build more corsairs to you know pick off overlords and stuff maybe that's the play you gotta build more corsairs get a fleet of corsairs going to just uh, annihilate any overlords coming into your main or maybe build cannons in here i'm not sure exactly what the answer is but Ruin certainly didn't have it. Zealot takes this game home. Was a fun little set here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Watching some Zealot games. I wouldn't call this necessarily a spotlight. We only had three games total. But I'll be looking forward to more Zealot games. I'm going to put it together another Zealot spotlight in the future. He certainly plays enough on the ladder to make one of those happen. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that. But for now, that is it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.